our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Baikonur Cosmodrome sits in the Kazakh steppe on the banks of the universe, as the first Soviet pioneers of spaceflight aptly put it. The launch here is always special with the unique Soyuz Roar. It's an art object, a creation and a historic artifact at the same time. All these qualities are so enormous and so rarely are they found together in the space business. Soyuz is a myth. Now the myth is about to take a leap into the unknown and take off from the tropics. At the Guyanan Space Center, Baikonur's best are putting Soyuz fuselages together. Modifications for the tropical climate are made. Soyuz tales took me through my childhood. There was Sputnik and then Gagarin, and I have to say, seeing Soyuz blast off from French Guiana is something that 10 years ago I couldn't have imagined, and now it's happening. Sputnik's famous bip bipping from outer space in 1957 came courtesy of a Semyorka launcher, a modified ballistic missile. It didn't much look like Soyuz, but this was its ancestor. In 1961, a Russian, Yuri Gagarin, became the first human in space after orbiting the Earth. He used a Vostok launch system, a development of the Semyorka, and another brainchild of the father of Soviet space flight, Sergei Korolev. Soyuz would be the pinnacle of this Ukrainian's career. Soyuz has been flying for more than 50 years. That's a total of more than 1,700 launches, with very few failures. It is the world's most reliable launcher. Korolev built Soyuz for manned flight. The rocket and its cramped three-man capsule became the workhorse of the entire Soviet space program and put together the Mir space station, which operated between 1986 and 2001. During this time, the Americans landed on the moon and built the space shuttle. The Soyuz rocket was first used 20 years before the shuttle, which the Americans scrapped in July. Today, Soyuz is the world's only launcher that can get astronauts to the International Space Station. Manned spaceflight is just one thing Soyuz offers. It can also launch Progress freight capsules to supply the ISS, a job it currently shares with the Ariane-launched ATV. The Russian rocket can also put commercial or scientific satellites into space. And this is the object of Soyuz's first joint venture in the jungle. Soyuz commercialization as an industrial entity only came after the Soviets in the 1990s. It's obvious that an important client like ESA would want to see Soyuz rockets using Guiana rather than Kazakhstan. We also only have one launcher, Ariane, so there is a benefit in being able to operate two, one a heavy lifter and another of medium payload working side by side. Russia, France and ESA signed an historic deal in November 2003 to set up the Soyuz box of toys in Guyana. It meant a big building program at the Cinemary launch pad, 13 kilometers from Ariane's Kourou home. Both sit near the equator, 
and benefit from a slingshot effect at launch from the Earth's rotation. Just by bringing Soyuz to Guyana means we can get one ton more of payload into orbit than we could from Kazakhstan. That's what's behind the idea of building a pad here, over three tons instead of two. 860 kilometers along the Volga from Moscow, Samara is a major space industry center. TSKB Progress factories rolled out as many as 60 Soyuz launches a year at the height of an 80s boom. Today it gives rockets a tropical preparation for the rigors of the unfamiliar climate and then sends them by rail and sea across the world to the European spaceport, 11,300 kilometers away. There are three big differences between a Soyuz prepared for a Baikonur launch and a Guiana launch. The first is digital controls. Analog were used, but you have to remember this was designed 60 odd years ago. Second is the long upper composite. The Baikonur model is three meters in diameter and five or six long. We use a very long 11 meter one to get satellites in. The final modification is a third orbital stage, the Frigat. It sits between the launcher and satellites and can maneuver them into position exactly. Fregat is a new tool. With its individual motors, it can be flown from the ground by flight engineers. Its main engine can be ignited some 20 times during a mission for orbital positioning. For its first Guiana mission, Soyuz is working for an old client, Europe's Galileo SatNav project. Its two first test satellites took off from Baikonur in 2005 and 2008. Today, Galileo's first two operational satellites will also go up with Soyuz, but from French Guiana. It's a double event, a double first. Fregat will take two 700 kilo satellites to an altitude of 23,000 kilometers, Constellation Galileo's operational orbit. Three hours and 50 minutes after liftoff, the two satellites will be placed in the same orbit and Soyuz's mission will be complete. That's if all goes to plan. This is, after all, rocket science. The gap between success and failure is wafer thin. All you need is one tiny problem and total success becomes total failure. In the Belgian Ardennes, the women of Charleroi also have a vital role to play in the only part of Soyuz not to roll out of the Samara factory, the rocket motor cutoff system. It's used if there's a problem at launch, and women are preferred for its assembly for their manual agility, dexterity, and concentration. Suite à la législation française, French law states you have to totally control the path of any rocket launched and be able to protect the launch pad and any population or homes nearby. So we've equipped Soyuz with a safety chain. If the rocket flies off course, we can cut the motor's fuel supply. When the doors of the assembly hall finally opened, Soyuz's familiar shape slid into an unfamiliar sun. An unfamiliar operation awaits too, fitting the Fregat module and then the twin Galileo satellites. 
en Guyane, nous avons souhaité... We wanted to use a different process to the one in Baikonur and put the rocket on the pad first before fitting the satellites. Then we isolate it with a gantry from exterior conditions. It rains a lot more here than in Plesetsk or Baikonur. So we protect the rocket and rocket teams while we bring the satellites to them and install them vertically. Korolev would always take his team out to walk alongside their rockets as they transferred to the launch pad. Sinemarie follows that tradition, adding to the sense of occasion. I can tell you from a personal point of view, I'm very happy. I've been involved with this project for 15 years, so it's like my life's work. In the final hours, Soyuz's last parts came together. Fregat taking its place as the space bus that will do all the orbital work with its Galileo charges. Soyuz is a Soyuz is a little bit special among launchers. That's why this shot could put a lump in my throat, and in a few others who know all about space and who love it.